Hey guys, welcome back and today let's talk about the hot topic that everyone is talking about right now that is boycotting Chinese products here in India. And I know that everyone has been going about supporting this cause and honestly, I do too. But is it really viable to boycott Chinese products? Let's understand whether it is economically viable for India to completely ban Chinese products. So let's get started. Humans have allowed themselves to work in unity and collectively grow as a species by working hand in hand with each other. As the human civilization began to evolve, our interests also started to change. From an early agrarian society, we evolved to a species that functions and thrives by exchanging resources with money. This exchange of resources is now called trade and trade has helped countries grow rapidly. The world we live in is a large intertwined network consisting of different countries and for all the lofty ideals that we believe in, we are remarkably reliant on each other. Most of us specialize in only one thing, a writer writes, a sales agent sells, a teacher teaches and a web developer makes websites. And despite our limited skill set and unique specializations, we can still access a wide array of resources and live a fulfilling life thanks to the principle of exchange. Money and trade bridge the gap between what we can produce and what we can consume. Imagine yourself having to fetch and source your own food, drill your own oil, make your own television and teach yourself economics. These are tedious tasks almost impossible to execute. In summary, we are dependent on each other and these dependencies are not just restricted to national borders. You are probably seeing this video on a smartphone manufactured in Vietnam with transistors shipped in from Taiwan enclosed in plastic case from China. The plastics were probably made using oil imported from Oman and drilled by a labor force dominated by Indians. And sure, you could try to eliminate these dependencies, but it comes at a cost. And people simply don't like paying a premium. Consider India. Cheap smartphones from Chinese companies have dominated the Indian market because consumers have often prioritized price plus quality above all else. Last year, it took only 15 minutes for Xiaomi's smartphone Redmi Note 8 to sell out once it went on a flash sale. And competition from Chinese phone makers has forced incumbents to cut prices as well, in effect boosting smartphone penetration in India. In 2015, we had close to 200 billion smartphone users. By 2019, this number had almost doubled. And the fruits of affordability have largely occurred to the end customer. A farmer in Ganganagar can now watch videos of Madhubala thanks to a bigger screens and higher resolutions. A pensioner in JP Nagar can stream songs thanks to her 4G enabled smartphone. A construction worker in Mulund can wire money to his parents back in UP using Beam because his phone finally supports Android. In summary, the interdependencies that we loathe so much has made entertainment and digital transaction ubiquitous. It is a testament to the prosperity gospel free trade preaches. In fact, foregoing this interdependencies can sometimes entail very real consequences. For instance, India imports close to 8 billion worth of chemicals from the Red Dragon. But China has only been able to carve an edge in the production and distribution of organic chemicals by incurring steep social costs. Chemical factories are notorious for emitting high amounts of pollutants and China's lax environmental laws enabled manufacturers to run coal plants in full steam with the ultimate objective of minimizing costs. And so, toxic factories mushroomed across the country burning dirty fuel, turning the blue skies of northern China into a dark cesspool of carbon and sulfur dioxide. Pollution masks became a staple among Chinese citizens and by some estimates over a million people were expected to die prematurely. So in effect, China was able to offer dyes, chemicals and surfactants at affordable prices by polluting their skies and reducing these interdependencies would also entail bearing the same burden. 
you would have to minimize compliance cost by diluting environmental norms by putting human lives at stake indian lives at stake and it's a price that we have refused to pay but that doesn't mean we shouldn't reduce interdependencies at all in fact if reducing interdependencies can provide the necessary stimulus for local manufacturing to compete with foreign imports then it's something we should pursue vigorously however the approach we adopt to pursue this end goal ought to be meaningful for the last few weeks there's been a concerted effect to boycott chinese products and like i said i share these sentiments on the face of chinese aggression people feel the need to act to revolt but this is a suboptimal approach since it doesn't achieve the stated objective that can often lead to excessive collateral damage 18 of the 30 indian unicorns have chinese investors on board local emissaries who sell quintessentially desi products often have ties to suppliers in china your local toy store is probably shipping all its products from china in fact india carries a trade deficit of 58 billion with the country and we can't wipe away this deficit overnight but there's an economically sustainable approach to promote local manufacturing and it's not driven by boycotts instead it's driven by incentives offer the right incentives and you can get the people to do the most amazing things the indian government set aside rupees 50000 crores to incentivize local and global electronic manufacturers to make in india only recently they also set aside another 10000 crores to incentivize manufacturers and source and produce raw materials for pharmaceutical drugs this is how you reduce dependencies with china not boycotts the tragedy here is that news media has dedicated very little time to discuss the incentive programs instead we have had endless shows on chinese boycotts and mindless posturing this feedback loop is dangerous because it gives people the impression that we are left with no resource but this isn't true effective policy making and incentive programs can help us reduce interdependencies it's a time tested principle and it is economically sound so if you really want to hurt china let's get behind policy makers and scrutinize the incentive programs that's how you contribute to nation building so this was all about this video please hit the like button and also the subscription button for more content i'll come up with another video until next time bye